Have you ever wondered how fast things happen? Well, in today's little 10 to 15 minute snippet here, we're going to talk about the speed of gravity and aberration effects. So everyone can measure the speed of light, but it's actually more difficult to estimate the speed of gravity, and there's cool concepts that go along the way. We'll probably guess the answer to that question a few times here. So this is Physics X, Extraordinary Concepts in Physics. I'm Robert Nemiroff, and this is Michigan Technological University in the beautiful Upper Peninsula of Michigan. Uh, so you can um, find out about this class by going online to Starship Asterisk. You we're on, U on iTunes, and if you can read this, you can go to that address. Uh, you can find that expanded in other uh, lectures. So does gravity propagate at the speed of light? It is clear that gravitational radiation propagates at C, speed of light, although this has never been directly experimentally confirmed, uh, since gravitational radiation has not been directly detected. Detecting gravitational radiation is one of the great um, quests of modern physics and astrophysics. Uh, large gravitational wave detectors uh, have been created and will continue to be created on the surface of the Earth and possibly in orbit. Um, but so far, they haven't expected to be successful, and they're not. But hopefully, in the next 10 to 15 years, they might find something. Um, what about gravity itself? Not necessarily gravitational radiation. So light carries, is, doesn't carry the electric force but it's related. The gravitational force isn't carried by the gravitational radiation, but by, well, general relativity doesn't have it carried by any particles, uh, but does it have a speed? So it has long history. Newton, back in the 1680s, uh, he assumed the speed of gravity was infinite, and that fit all the observations that he had at the time. So that was fine. He did the best he could. We're all proud of him. Uh, Laplace, uh, a few years later, uh, tried to fit Newton's uh, theory with a wave mechanism where the speed of gravity was equal to the speed of light. So by that time, they knew the speed of light clearly was finite. And uh, Laplace said, well, let's see if gravity was. Uh, tried to fit it. Uh, he couldn't do it. Uh, he then estimated that gravity moves about 10 to, 10 to the 6, a million times faster than light. Lorentz, in 1904, created a theory with uh, ether, which is this strange stuff that pervades all time and space, which may be similar to the quantum C, but back then it was just sort of a medium that had photons in it. Uh, so uh, he fixed Laplace's uh, problem, so he was able to get that the speed of gravity to be the speed of light, but he couldn't get the precession of Mercury. So Mercury's orbit around the sun, here's the sun, here's Mercury, is in an that's exaggerated, an elongated orbit. And the orientation of the elongated orbit, so if you come back a few years later, you'll find it like this. Uh, it has precessed. I'll write the word precess in scripply text. You can't, can't read very well. Um, so many more people tried to explain gravity having the same speed as light, and they, um, uh, they tried to get the precession of Mercury and other things, but um, no one could really do it until Albert Einstein himself uh, came up with general relativity in 1915. Actually, he got it wrong once in 1912, so this is a very difficult problem. Uh, in 1915, he came up with general relativity, and in general relativity, gravity, he figures, uh, also propagates with the speed of light. So um, let's go into some details, though. So I'm going to take a little aside, and we're going to get back to that. But we've got to build up a little bit before we get back to that point. So you see two stars, say, in the distance. You're driving down the road. Here's a hill. You're driving down a road like this. And there's the dividing line. And you're moving this direction. In the distance, you see two stars. Uh, you start moving really rapidly toward these stars. Uh, what do you see? Uh, we've touched aberration in a previous lecture, but I like to review things. So do the stars move apart? Oops, I didn't want to do that. Okay. Do they move apart? Do they move together? Do they stay where they are, or do they just get out of the way just to be safe? So, drum roll please, the answer is the stars actually appear to move together. So if you weren't familiar with aberration, you might not have guessed that. It's a strange effect. Uh, when you move, let's say, towards something, things in front of you tend to bunch, and things behind you tend to spread out. Things in front of you also become more blue. That's a well-known straight Doppler color effect. 
and things behind you become more red. That's also a straight Doppler effect. But also the general aberration, the angular change of things as you see them. Things will bunch in front of you. So if you move forward fast enough, everything practically will be in front of you. So if you don't, if you don't want to bother to turn your head to see something behind you, just go really fast. And then you won't have to. You can just see it in front of you in your field of view. All right, let's keep going. Let's say now that you place, you're placed in a circular orbit around the sun. So here's your basic sun. Let's make it yellow. Um, so you're in orbit here around the sun. You're in a circular orbit. So it makes a nice big circle, which I can't draw very well. Um, so because of aberration, which we just found out makes stars appear to move forward. Does the sun appear to precisely 90 degrees? This is your 90 degrees here, at least as much as I can make it. Does the sun appear 90, precisely 90 degrees from your orbital motion? So you're moving up like this. The sun appears at, is this 90 degrees? Yes, that is necessary for a circular orbit. No, aberration makes the sun appear slightly ahead of you. No, aberration leaves the sun behind and makes the sun appear slightly behind you. Which is it? So you can think about that. You can pause the videotape and ask your friends. And the answer is, aberration makes the sun appear slightly ahead of you. So the faster you go around the sun, the faster you orbit, the more the sun will appear ahead of you. That's odd. How come no one ever told you that before? Okay, let's keep going. Now, the sun appears slightly ahead of you. Let's, give, let's grant that. Uh, the sunlight push you back, creating a drag force as you orbit the sun. So you orbit quickly, or even not quickly, it happens a little bit, no matter your speed. So you're orbiting the sun, the sun appears slightly ahead of you, that means the photons are coming toward you. Are they slowing you down? Yes, that sounds reasonable, is the first answer. No, that would cause the Earth to fall into the sun, is the second answer. No, the sun being over there cannot create a force over here, is the third answer. So which would it be? Pause the video, but I will surge forward and tell you that, yes, that sounds reasonable. It's called the Poynting-Robertson effect, and we see it in the solar system all the time, but we don't see it on the Earth, because the Earth is really massive compared to the dinky little photon energies that come from the Sun. The Sun can warm the Earth, but the momentum of the photons and the speed of the Earth don't cause any significant Poynting-Robertson drag on the Earth. But little dust particles around the Sun they feel it all the time. You can see it in comet orbits. As the, as the comet you know, spurts little particles, those little particles actually feel the pointing robertson effect and slow down and eventually fall into the sun. So it's real. Okay, so now we've agreed that the sun appears slightly ahead of you. Does the gravity of the sun also appear slightly ahead of you? Yes, since, sun's, since sunlight and gravity move at the same speed, it would. Two, no, gravity is immune to this effect. Three, does this mean the solar system is unstable? Which of those? Think, think, think. Drum roll answer, please. No, gravity is immune to this effect. Isn't physics strange? So, although few direct experiments have been done, the stability of Earth's orbit puts limit on the aberrational effects, as detailed in an interesting paper by Cardip 2000, which I suggest people go off and read, although it's technical. If I'm, in Einstein's general relativity, there are velocity-dependent terms that cancel the aberration effect. The calculation is complex, but demanded by conservation of angular momentum, although the emission of gravitational radiation will make the cancellation inexact. So in general relativity, there are, are velocity-dependent terms. So the speed that you go around something affects the effective acceleration you will get, which we will then say in terms of force, so that you're not space, space force in general relativity. Um, but they will cancel. So isn't that strange? It is therefore possible to see someone in one direction and feel the force pulling from them in a different direction. So the universe is not what you see is what you get. It's not WYSIWYG. You can feel an attraction from one direction and look there and say, I don't see anything there. That's strange. How come I'm feeling an attraction toward that direction? It's because the light is doing something different from the gravity. However, the gravity still propagates at sea. Because that carlip 
calculation than previous calculations were done, meaning the velocity-dependent terms were computed assuming not that the speed of light is infinite, the speed of, light, speed of gravity is infinite, the speed of gravity is finite, but there are velocity-dependent terms that cancel it. Um, does a charged object orbiting an oppositely charged object see an apparated electric field is the next question you can ponder. Um, so now you consider this to be a uh, positive charge, negative charge, this is a positive charge. Um, yes, all electromagnetic effects will feel aberration. No, electric fields are also immune to this effect. Which is that? And the answer is, let's clear the screen. Electric fields are also immune to this effect. It could get complicated that when you move, you create magnetic terms and things get sometimes complicated. However, there is no aberration of the electric field. The calculation is slightly different than for the gravitational effect in general relativity. Uh, it basically results for something called Noether's theorem. Um, a famous woman physicist of the early part of the 20th century, any field that is invariant over time will conserve energy locally and hence will not show significant aberration effects. Otherwise, you would get non-conservation of energy. When worked out in detail, again, velocity-dependent terms come in to cancel the effect of the finite speed of the propagation of the changing electric field. So both electric fields and gravitational fields propagate with the speed of light, but they have velocity-dependent terms that knock out aberration effects. So what you see is not what you get. That's the strange uh, lesson uh, of today. Uh, that gives us insight into the speed of forces, the speed of gravity, and speed of electricity. And with that, I'll ask you to keep Schrodinger away from your cat, and I will see you next time when I have more strange physics.